Welcome to A Little Box of Paints. My name's Sophie, and today I'm going to show you a fun art activity you can do at home with your kids. All you need is a little bit of water-based paint and a marker and some objects that you can find around the house to trace. Um, let's get started. So this activity today will involve a few basic materials, the ones I just mentioned, but if you have some extra materials on hand, you can use them as well. So I'm gonna show you a few different ways you can go through this project. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating a lovely painted background and then using household objects to trace shapes on top and then turning those shapes into insects and bugs. Spring is in the air. Well, at least where I am, spring is in the air. I know some of you uh, back in the Northern US and Canada, maybe not so much, but here in Belgium, we've had beautiful weather. So I think it's gonna be a nice time to, or maybe could be a nice time to appreciate that. So uh, the materials, like I said, any water-based paint would be fine. I'm gonna use watercolor. If you have water-based craft paint at home, that will work well too. I would suggest, uh, I would just suggest, mixing up my words today. I would just suggest mixing it with quite a bit of water so that it's fairly liquidy because you're gonna wanna have that soft liquid look on your background paper. Um, the paper I'm using is a watercolor paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, I'm gonna show you um, a way that you can still do this activity. It just involves using a little bit less water because regular wa uh, paper doesn't really suck up water the same way that watercolor paper does. You're also gonna want markers. I'm gonna use Sharpies, but any marker will work well. I know if you're doing this activity with kids, you may not want to give your kids Sharpie markers because they are permanent. Um, it always helps to protect the surface you're working on. Just throw down some newspapers and you should be okay. Um, this activity is probably, I would say, good for ages about, maybe I'd say six to eight or nine. Um, older kids could absolutely do this and little ones can too. They're just gonna need a little bit more help when it comes to tracing some of the objects that you find around the house. Um, it always helps to have a little bit of tape on hand to tape down your paper. Um, paint brushes, I'm gonna be using a really large one today. Any size is fine as always. A bit of water and some paper towel to blot your brush. Some of the extra materials that you can use if you want um, is a small straw. I have these nice reusable bamboo straws that I'm going to use. If you don't have any straws in the house, um, you can just roll up a piece of paper and tape it. It will work fine. Okay. You don't have to do this though. I'm just going to show you a little extra thing that your kids might enjoy doing with the straws and the water paint. So uh, we are going to get started. Um, the way I'm going to show you how to do this is I'm going to work with uh, four different insects. Okay. But you can do as many um, as you like, or as few as you like. You could do one giant insect. Your kids could make up insects. Um, I'm going to pick four. I'm going to do a bee, a caterpillar, a ladybug, and a beetle. Okay. So, um, one of the things I love about water-based paint is that water is part of it. Okay. Water is actually a great tool to use as an artist. Um, what I'm going to do, since I have that thick watercolor paper, I'm going to actually place water down on my paper before, oh, I've got a little kitty hair in there before I um, do any painting, okay? So that really wets the paper. Now, if you don't have watercolor paper, if you're using regular drawing paper or printer paper, I would skip this step and move on to the next one that I'm about to show you now, okay? So while the paper is still wet, you're gonna pick your colors and I'm gonna go in and grab my yellow for my bumbly bee. And as you place the color down on the water, it turns into almost like a jelly look and it's really cool. Okay, it's almost like a tie-dye. You can mix colors a little bit. I'm gonna stick mine to colors that are very similar for this activity, but your kids are gonna wanna do all kinds of things, I'm sure. So it's also a bit of a color mixing experiment. All right, so here's the area for my bee, a big yellow blob. That is where I will draw my bee later when the paint has dried. Um, so if you're not using watercolor paper, what you can do, and I'll show you right now, is just paint with your water-based paints right on top of the paper. I mean, it doesn't have quite the same jelly effect, but honestly, your kids are still gonna enjoy it. All right, so here's some green. This will be for my caterpillar. If I wanna mix a little bit of green in there with that yellow, I can for sure. Now this green isn't quite green enough for me, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. All right, if you're gonna be mixing colors, I recommend that you try and mix colors that are similar. Your kids are gonna wanna mix all the colors. So there's a chance some of your insects may turn out brown, but hey, that's the way it is sometimes, right? The kids will learn, this is what we do. We practice and try different things. Ooh, I like that. All right, I'm gonna go back to that kind of wet look because I do really like that. And I'm gonna put a little bit up here. And I'm gonna make the blue. My beetle is gonna be blue. Um, 
A resource you can use to help you out with this if your kids are kind of stuck on what some of these insects might look like, um, National Geographic. There is, um, there's quite a lot of great photos, up close photos of animals on National Geographic and insects. So that could be an option too. You can always go online and look up some images of different type of exotic insects around the world. Um, this project also, of course, would work with animals other than insects, right? They could draw anything. Um, in fact, the National Geographic photo arc is a great resource. There is an artist, a photographer named Joel Sartori, and Sartori, sorry, and he has um, made it his mission to cat, um, catalog many uh, species around the world, okay? So he's got photos of about 9,000 different species. He's gone to various zoos and conservation sites um, to photograph these animals in hopes that people will um, be inspired to care a little bit more about conserving them. I think his ultimate goal is to cat uh, catalog 15,000 and he's about halfway there, just over halfway there. So that's something to consider too, all right? Having some images for your kids to look at. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toss up some simple drawings after. I'll leave up some images of my insects so you as parents can go and take a look in case you wanna you know, give your kids some tips on how to draw some insects. But honestly, they probably don't need your help. They'll do a great job on their own. So I'm just finishing my red here for my ladybug. Okay, careful not to get the red too close to the green because it might go a little brown. Right, so I realized I totally forgot to show you one of the cool things you can do with your straws. So I'm gonna do that right now. Um, basically, what you can do is put some wet color down, and as long as it's got enough water, you can use the straw, I'm sure many of you have done this when you were younger, and you can blow the paint around, and it creates this cool kind of splatter technique. So I'm gonna actually do that right now um, on top of here already. I can't believe I forgot. Um, hopefully this all edits okay in the end. So I'm gonna add quite a bit, and then I'm gonna take my, add a bit more water, take my straw, Neat, okay, I'm gonna go in here and do that with the green too. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's only my second time doing this, guys, come on. Um, let's take a look here and see if I can add a little bit on here too. Cool, all right. So that actually looks pretty awesome. I'm pretty happy with that. So uh, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> And there we are. So not only have I prepared my background to draw over top, I have also um, set it up so it's kind of a bit of an abstract art piece right now. Okay, um, it does have to dry. It might take a little bit of time. If you're in a bit of a rush, you could always just block some of the pooled up water areas with a bit of paper towel, okay? Um, but I would recommend just letting it air dry. So if you're watching this as an adult right now in preparation to do this with your kids later, um, I'm gonna jump ahead and show you the next step. If you're watching it with your kids, I would suggest pausing right now, letting it dry, and going to look around your house for some different types of materials that you can use as tracers. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples, all right? Um, I found in my fridge, French's mustard, because I thought it had a really cool shape that I could use for my um, bumblebee. So I'm gonna hang on to that. I also found a Philadelphia, I feel like I'm advertising these products and I'm not, um, a cream cheese uh, container, and it has a really nice sort of rounded oval shape, and I'm gonna use that for my beetle. Um, I found a nice couple variety of different circular ones that I'm gonna use. I've got this tiny can of uh, pop, and this has a nice circle underneath. I've also got the washi tape that I have. I could use that as a circle. You can find circles anywhere, right? In your house, there are mugs, whatever. Um, and I've got my little lip chap too that I'm gonna use maybe for some smaller circles. So part of the reason I recommend tracing is because it's good, <sighs> tracing helps kids develop some of those fine motor skills, all right? Which is something that I've really noticed as an art teacher in the last maybe five, six, seven years. Kids need help with this, right? They're little, um, and I really think that this is something that they can practice on their own too. Um, when you're tracing, I would suggest if you have items that you don't want marker all over, have your kids trace in pencil first and then they can go over with the marker after. That's also a good exercise in hand-eye coordination. Um, but I mean, like, I don't care if I get Sharpie on my French's mustard, it's still gonna taste delicious. Um, so I would probably just use the Sharpie for this, right? No big deal. So um, take a break for a sec, 
go collect some items that you think your kids or collect with your kids, a bit of a scavenger hunt, um, some items that they could use to trace different insect shapes. And uh, yeah, when you're ready, come back and unpause and I'll show you the next steps. All right, we're back. That was fast. Um, so I've got my objects here that I showed you a little earlier. I've got my background paper. Spoiler alert, I made it earlier, so mine's already dry. Um, but it's very similar to the one I just showed you. Luckily, my paper dried fairly flat. If it was to be a little bumpy, I would probably just tape it down back onto my surface again. Okay, so now I'm going to go straight out with Sharpie marker. But if you want to use pencil first, highly recommend it. Um, especially if you're using markers um, that maybe aren't as washable and you don't want them on your objects. If you're using washable marker like Crayola washable markers or a big washable markers, you should be okay. Um, but I'm gonna go for it. So I'm gonna take my Sharpie marker. I'm using black. Of course, your kids can use any color they want. But the idea is we wanna have some of the color behind showing. So if they start trying to color in everything with marker, I mean, let them do what they want, it's their art, but maybe give the suggestion of, oh, let's see the color through the bug, okay? Whatever, you, you, you know, you do it how you like. Um, so I'm gonna start with my B. I'm gonna take my French's mustard and I'm just gonna trace this real quick. Da, da, da. And it's a cool B shape, at least for the B body. Um, nice, all right. Um, my B needs a head, so I'm gonna trace the outline of my um, washi tape here. Ooh, uh, that's okay. I don't mind if I get marker on this. It's not the end of the world. I've got a ton of washi tape. Like this. All right. B head, B body. If you want to trace some wings, you can. I'm just going to draw mine for fun. Wings, just two kind of curved lines that come together at the end in a point. And it's a B, so it's going to have a little stinger. Um, I'm pretty sure bees have four sets of wings. I should have maybe Googled this ahead of time. So I'm going to draw another set. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna put this up for you at the end so you can take a good look. Um, if your child wants to add some marker drawing now to fill in some of those B stripes, this could be a good time to do that. Okay, um, little antenna. And if you wanna draw a little happy face for your B, you can maybe give him some eyes. Maybe he's a happy little B. Okay. Pretty sure that's backwards, whatever, it's fine. All right, here we go. I'm gonna add a few more stripes. There we go, cool. Looks great. All right, um, I want more stripe. Poor little guy's missing a few stripes here. He's a little lopsided. Okay, there's my B, voila. Um, for, and I've been looking forward to this guy, for the um, caterpillar, I'm gonna actually trace this little circle guy again. And what I'm gonna do, and I am of course always inspired by Eric Carle, the very hungry caterpillar. Um, that's kind of where I'm getting my idea for my caterpillar. So I'm just tracing many, many, many little circles here and I'm kind of looping them around into a shape that maybe a caterpillar would be in. He's gonna be super cute, this guy. I love him. Okay, get some little antennas and maybe some feet. <laughs> this is super fun. And some funny little eyes. And he's smiling too. We got some happy bugs. Um, next, for my ladybug, I'm going to actually use this uh, pop can. It's going to be a little ladybug. And I'm going to trace around here. You probably, depending on the age of your kid, are going to have to help them with a bit of tracing, even if it's just holding the item down for them, okay? Um, ladybug, we kind of split her down the middle here, and she's going to have some little dots. As many as you're as little as you want. Mm -hmm. And just a funny little head. Her head's a little half circle. You could trace that too if you wanted. I filled mine in. She doesn't get a smiley face because I... Filled in her whole head. And then last, the beetle. I'm thinking my Philadelphia cream cheese may be a little big. That's fine, it's okay, it's a big beetle. All right, I'm gonna trace this guy around here. He's gonna have a little bit of green in him too, that's cool. All right, now my beetle, I'm just gonna chop off his head here. <laughs> Draw a straight line down, you can use a ruler if you want. I'm gonna add a little bit of texture to my beetle here. Maybe these are his little wings, I'm not really sure. Like I said, I probably should have looked up some pictures of bugs ahead of time. I'm just winging it. Maybe he's got some funny little feet.
my beetle will also be smiling. And some antenna. There we go. These are my bugs. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have fun doing this with your kids. The main idea is that you can do anything. It doesn't have to be insects. You could make funny little kitties. You could make funny dinosaurs, um, any animal you want really. And as long as they're thinking about having fun, playing with the paint in the background and then what they can draw on top, you can do it however you like. So um, I do wanna say thank you so much to everybody who subscribed to my channel and who's been liking the Facebook page. If you wanna see a little more content, some smaller videos and some little snippets, you can also follow me on Instagram at a little box of paints. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun making these videos. I've got more coming. I've got the grown-up videos coming soon too. A little, um, some art for older kids or adults as well. You can check those out. Please share with any families who are uh, at home. Well, they should be at home um, over the next few weeks who might be looking for art activities to do with their kids. If you have any requests for different types of activities with specific materials, please leave a comment and I'll do my best to uh, to try and figure something out for you. And if you do have, uh, if you try any of these activities, I would love to see them shared. Okay, you can share them on the Facebook page. You can tag me on Instagram at a little box of paints and I would love to see them. Um, that's it for now. Thanks so much. Awesome. I hope you have fun uh, creating these with your families. <laughs>